Hi, hi everyone. I'm Lini here. So first of all, welcome everyone to this uh, Smart Money Workshop. A kind request here, those who join us uh, with your nicknames, uh, please uh, rename yourself uh, because I need to take attendance for HRDC submission. And we also be recording this session here. Okay, so without further ado, let me introduce our speaker for tonight. Dr. Karthi. Okay, so Dr. Karthi is a graduate of accountancy from the University of Malaya and he has an MBA from Varick University, UK. And Dr. Karthi has a doctorate in business admin now from California Metropolitan University. Professionally, he was an ex auditor of Bank Nagara Malaysia and certified law of attraction and Ho Ponopono trainer and certified hypnotherapist. And Dr. Karthi also a life, health, and business coach. And most importantly, as inspire, enrich, and empower more than 100,000 people and also achieve his financial freedom and retire at the age of 40. So please join me. Welcome Dr. Karthi to the virtual stage. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Um, thank you, Lenny, for int the introduction. I'm so happy that I could uh, be with all of you today. And, uh, you know, uh, Lenny said many things about me. I think um, all that are just our credentials. Yeah. I, I just want to uh, tell you that it's a, such a pleasure to see about 48 of you here today to listen to this talk. I know it's uh, many of you went to work today and you probably you're tired, but yet you just still decided to come and listen to me. I will tell you this today. If you were to um, uh, take up the things I, I share, share with you today and implement them in your life, you are going to have an amazing, amazing financial future. I call it a smart money workshop because I just don't want to do a talk. I just want to give you tips on what you got to do from today. I, I'll give you things like, uh, you know, five, uh, five positive financial habits you must have in your life. I'll teach you about, you know, the five mistakes people make in money management and the three mindset of the wealthy people. The, the reason I do all this is because I want you to go back and be able to feel, wow, you know what? If I do this, I'm able to actually achieve financial success. In fact, if you look at the poster, um, uh, I, I've done this before for the National Training Week. And you see how people are, are talking about, you know, it's great, you know, I can start growing my wealth or, you know, full of information and tips and it's a booster and whatever not. Now, before we go any further, I just want to tell you a little bit of background on myself. Now, um, I, I know she, uh, Lenny mentioned I'm an accounting graduate and I worked in Baganai as an auditor. And so probably some of you feel that, oh, oh wow, no wonder Mr. Kati is rich because he studied accountancy. Let me tell you something. Okay, I don't know how many of our accountants are. Accountants, uh, they know how to balance their account. I, I don't really know, you know, they call it kunchi kere kere or balance sheet. Accountants are very clever, you know, can balance the account, you know. If the account doesn't balance, they come out with something called a suspense account or account gantong. My life while working in Bank Negara and for many years, my account always balanced only. Never had extra. Never had extra. And I was so puzzled about this whole concept about why is it I studied accountancy yet I cannot. Then I realized something. There's a difference between financial education and financial intelligence. Financial education, I became an accountant. Financial intelligence allowed me to retire at the age of 40. Now, I know you look at my picture, I still look like 40. I'm actually 60 years old, but I retired, retired 20 years ago because I didn't have to work anymore because I already had made money in different, different, uh, made money and still making money from different sources. And I'm going to share with you how you could do the same as well. Huh? But before that, before that, I want to ask all of your questions. I want you to share in my chat box. Okay. All of you are listening to me today. What made you want to come to this workshop? What, 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 I mean, you could do 8.30 to 9.30, can watch TV, can, you know, do all kinds of things, spend time with the family, go for a date, you know, park or whatever you want to do. Lah. But you decide to come. Why? Why? Why you want to know about money? What? What is the objective? Okay, learn something new. Thank you, ye ye. Very good. Explore new things, ideas. What about? I mean, it's called smart money, right? Ah, how to manage money? How to be financially literate? Yeah, very good. What else? What about the rest of you? Um, financial freedom, debt, uh, knowledge, and earning money. Multiply my income. Okay. Um, I don't think I manage well. Very honest. Uh, if I find out more. Uh, what are the five mistakes? Okay, fair enough. Oh, wow. Mama, no, I like that, man. Because you're a man. What, you mean what? I don't understand that part, you know? Because I'm a man. Okay, so that's why you attended, is it? Wow. Okay. Oh, you're the man of the house. Okay, maybe that's what you mean. You know, financially independent. Uh, I want to manage my environment, uh, money in this expensive environment. See, uh, Nick Amirul, you say, uh, I want to manage my money in this um, expensive environment. Let me tell you something. Eh? The environment is always expensive. 
but it is cheap for people to make a lot of money. So if you make money, you know, um, a lot of people don't look at a petrol price. A lot of people don't look at the roti chennai price. A lot of people don't because they don't worry because they make money. So I'm I'm one of those people who I'm glad that I made money. So I need you to know. I want to ensure my old age will be better than my parents. Very good. Money magnetism, one financial freedom, earn money smartly. I want the secret. I say, okay, I'll give you the secret today. Huh? How to manage money for the family, learn smart. Okay, very important, very good. I'm very happy you guys are participating. I want you to know something. At the end of the talk today, I'll give you my contact number. I'll also give you my YouTube channel. You please go to my YouTube channel because I give you so many, 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 many videos, tips, all are free, yeah? Free videos, free tips on about how to become rich, yeah? So you can go and watch all those videos um, because those are just tips that will allow you to uh, know this is what makes it. Because I have only one hour with you and this one hour might not be enough. But I will give you my contact number if you want to keep in touch with me. I do have a coaching program, which is which is free. At the end of the session, I'll try, uh, I, uh, Lenny will give you a evaluation from Philab and say, yes, I want to go for Mr. Karthi's coaching program. Then I will inform you when I'm doing that. Eh? But now, for now, uh, for now, I want to start the session by talking to you and telling you about, you know, um, my story a little bit so that you guys... I, I, I don't want you to attend the talk thinking that, oh, Mr. Kati can talk about uh, money because he probably is rich or is struck lottery or, you know, whatever. Let me tell you a little bit of story. Yeah? Uh, I, I always wanted to be rich, but I will tell you the secret today. Yeah? So when you go, you all don't need to go search, yeah? Three ways to become rich, okay? I, I, because when I'm small, I only study, study, study about how to make money. Yeah? Three ways to become rich, number, okay? Number one, the first way to become rich is to be born rich. Okay, uh, well, listen, none of us had a choice, can you didn't choose your parents, can you just, ta-da, you're born, right? So you don't have a choice. So same thing with me, I was born in an estate. My parents were Panore Gita. I come from a family of 12 brothers and sisters. I'm the Sambila and Anna Kasambila in the family. So very, very, very poor. We lived in Pottingson, lived in an estate. So for, for many, many years, is one meal a day. Loving family, beautiful love from my family, very encouraging, but money was a problem. So we had one meal a day or uh, uh, even if we have the salary day, we'll have maybe a little bit extra, maybe we'll have a chicken and uh, maybe a mutton curry or whatever. So it was very scarce. Lah. So I worked as a waiter when I was in schooling. Eh? I worked in a brick uh, laying company. I, I did many, many odd jobs just to make money. So I was not born rich. So three ways to become rich. Eh? Number one, I was not born rich. And I, I don't know about you guys, but if you are here today, I, I believe you want to know more. Even if you're born rich, I think you want to know more, right? Number two, the second way to become rich from what I understood from my research is marry somebody rich. So I don't know how many of you are not married. If you're not married, you still go peluang lah. So what I did was that when I read that and I said, okay, I'm going to University of Malaya. And uh, so I need to marry somebody. So when I go to University of Malaya, I'm going to study accountancy. But maybe I should look for a girl who is rich. So I started to look for girls who are rich. And I saw this Indian girl one day coming to university in a Honda Perlut. I was very impressed. She was very pretty, um, very sharp, Indian girl, uh, Honda, driving Honda Prelude. Eh? And I thought, wow, Honda Prelude, you know, this is a sports car kind of a model many years ago, right? Then two weeks later, she was driving a Honda Accord. Then I saw her driving a, a, a what do you call it, a BMW, then a Mercedes, different, different cars. Lah. Every, every three to four weeks, she would change the car. Lah. And I thought, wow, I was looking for one Indian girl who's rich. And then this girl has got so many cars coming, you know, and, which is bringing her father, but really rich. Well, well, I, 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 I got married. Then I realized father was actually a car salesman. Uh, so what happens? Whenever the car cannot be sold, the father brings to the house. Uh, then my wife now that that you know, so she brings the car to the university for one two weeks before you can find a buyer. Father can find a buyer. Then gone. And I said, oh my god. So all of you are not married. If you are looking for a rich girl or rich guy, please research. Eh? The third way to become rich is to actually. Uh, work hard and you'll become. I don't know. I'm sure your parents have told you get a good degree. Uh, uh, you know, get a good education, uh, get a good job, and work hard and become filthy stinking rich. So I have an accounting degree. I have an MBA from UK. I worked in Bank Negara, the mother of all banks. I bank got a lot of money, lah, but all the money belongs to other people, lah. It belongs to the bank actually. And uh, I worked very hard. So I worked hard because I want to be filthy stinking rich. But you know what happened? I was filthy and stinking for many, 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 many years, and I'm thinking. Oh my God, what happened? I thought if I get an accounting degree, I work in a good company, I become filthy thinking rich and how come filthy thinking? And that's when I realized the difference between financial intelligence and financial education. So in the next 45 minutes, I hope to share with you this tip. So whatever I'm going to share with you, yes, I've read many books um, and I can recommend many books for you to read. 
but I am going to share with you things that I have done in my life. Is that clear? So I've done in my life for me to retire at the age of 40. So that's what I'm going to share with you today. So this is what Bill Gates says. If you're born poor, it's not a mistake. If you die poor, it's a mistake. Let me tell you a secret. Since you've come for my talk, if you die poor, it's really, really a mistake. Since you've come for my talk, if you follow the advice I give you, and if you follow the advice, I will tell you today, you will become rich. You will become rich because the tips I give you are very simple tip, but very easy to follow. If you don't get it today, at least go to the YouTube channel and uh, see it. Yeah. Okay. Now, I want to do this. Eh? If you go to a doctor, if you go to a doctor and say, doctor, say uh, sakit or doctor, bari boli penadol da. Or you go to a doctor, doctor, say sakit la doctor, bari ubat boli da. What the doctor will do, they normally will check your pressure, will check your sugar, will check your uh, uh, whatever, pulse, you know, or, you know, cholesterol, or whatever, because they will do a check checkup. So what I'm going to do now, since all of you are here for a financial talk, I'm going to ask you 10 questions, and I want you to give an answer of yes or no to this question. And if your answer is no for any of the first eight questions, uh, the answer is no for the, any first eight questions, let me tell you something, you're already got financial problem. Many of you say you want to learn more, guys. Uh, so now I'm going to ask you the 10 questions. Uh, get ready. Now, once I finish the 10 questions, take a picture, but take a piece of paper now. All of you take a piece of paper. As I'm asking the question, question one, question two, question three, question just put a yes or no, yes or no, yes or no. If you have a no in the first eight questions, then you know financially you are doing something wrong. Are we ready? Ready? If you're ready, put 111 in the chat box. Then I know you're ready. If you're ready, put 111. Come on. 111, 111. Okay, then I know you've got a paper and pen ready. Okay. All right. Very good. Very good. Okay. Very good. I want you to participate. Huh? Participate with me because I don't want to be the only one talking. I want you to be chatting with me. Are you ready? Okay. First question I'm going to ask you. Yeah. Okay. First question. Okay. Do you save at least 10% of your salary every month? Not EPF, not SOXO, not no, 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 no. Other than after deduct SOXO, whatever, when you get your salary, do you put aside 10%? on your own, separately, put into an account and save it. Do you? Yes or no? Now, don't need to answer me in the chat box. Don't need to answer me in the chat box. You put in a paper, you put the yes or no. Okay? If the answer is no, uh, you already know that you're in financial problem because that's why when the share price drop, you cannot buy. When the land price drop, you cannot buy. Because you don't have money. Why? Because you don't even put aside 10%. Can. I, I do understand that many of you are uh, every every month, every day is like kais pagi makan pagi kais petang makan petang case, and I know some of you are like uh, sometimes you know when you get a salary underwater above water underwater above water. I understand totally. I went through all that in Benegara when I was working in Benegara. Okay. So second question: Do you have a retirement plan? I somebody mentioned just now during that uh, my chat. Somebody said, uh, you know, uh, I want to prepare for my future, my retirement, my old age. Yeah. Do you have? If you are working, fine. At least you got EPF lah. If you don't have EPF, at least you have taken insurance or unit trust or you've done some kind of investment. I recommend a lot of investment. You know, I do investment talks and uh, I, invest, I invest a lot locally as well as overseas. One day if I get a chance to talk to you, I will teach you my investment plans. But you do you have? That's yes or no. If you have yes, but goes. No, my God, friend, listen, you will get old one day. Your income will stop one day. Number three, do you budget your expenses monthly? Do you... Look at it and say, okay, when I get so much of money, this is how much I'm going to spend for outside eating. This is how much I'm going to send, spend for my, uh, my, my, you know, entertainment. This is how much I'm going to spend for whatever, whatever, whatever. Lah. Do you budget? A lot of people don't budget. So the answer is yes, but yes, no means put no. Number four, I can tell you, I can tell you, most of you will say no to this. Huh? Do you keep track of your expenses daily? Very, very, very important. There's a saying in Bahasa, bagai kera diberi bunga. In English, you say, uh, giving garland to a monkey. Now, let me tell you something. Eh? God or the universe is always there to help you. I will tell you today, I'm a law of attraction trainer. I teach a law of attraction and I teach people how to attract from the universe. Okay. Uh, I did a talk last week. Some of you attended, I think, about law of attraction. And next week, I'm doing a talk on law of attraction. Please, those of you who have not attended, come next week. But the universe is always giving. God or whatever religion you're in will always give. But Many of you don't make money. Do many of you don't get opportunity? Many of you, because you don't keep track of expenses, you don't even know how you spend your money. That's the biggest problem with me. You can. In fact, some of you ask me, uh, Mr. Kati, I hope you give me some tips. The one tip I'll tell you is this. Later I'll tell you in my is keep track of expenses. Okay. Number five, do you pay all your debt installment by due date? You must pay on the day. Don't wait, wait, wait until the banker call you. Hello, credit card payment, Bila Mabaya. Hello, credit card payment, Bila Mabaya. Hello, Roma. Don't wait. You must pay on the due date. On the due date, settle. On the due date, settle. On the due date, settle. 
Do you do that? Does the value of what you own exceed what you own? We all have assets. We all have liabilities. Some of you got so much of liabilities, got personal loan, la, got uh, credit card loan, la, got mother-in-law loan, la, got father-in-law loan, la, got a loan. La. So does the value of what you own exceed of what you own? Most people, sometimes the value of what they owe exceed, and then again, it's a problem. Number seven, your credit card balance must always be zero at payday. Now, what I'm saying is this, very simple. Credit card is the reason why most people are bankrupt in Malaysia. Credit card and personal loan, huh? Credit card, personal loan. credit card is very, very dangerous because many of you use credit card and pay 5%, 5%, 5%, but the 5% will keep you in debt for the rest of your life. That's why I say nowadays, it's not hutang sekeliling pinggang, it's hutang seluruh badan already now. Very important. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm actually against credit card. I'm okay. I'm always for debit card. Credit card, I have but I don't use it. I keep it though because of emergency. Just in case when I travel, I need credit card. Just in case if there's a medical emergency, I need a credit card. Just in case I'm booking for my hotel, whatever, I need a credit card. Then I use a credit card. But most of the time, I, I only use debit card because debit card is my own money, but I keep a credit card. So many people use credit card to buy this, buy this, you know, and that's where the problem is. Yeah? And then number eight, do you have liquid cash equivalent to six months of expenses? Now, you need to have, you see, you have expenses every month. That's why you go to work, correct or not? You have expenses every month. That's why you go to work, okay? Now, you need to have savings up to six months of your expenses so that if you lose your job, you still can survive for six months. Or you must have six months of worth of cash so that if the gold price drop, you can buy gold price and invest. If share price drop, you can buy. Or anything for the matter, you can invest. You know how many of you will tell, Are you, I wish my father bought a house a long time ago. I wish my father bought a land a long time ago. I wish I bought... The reason why you never buy because you never had this cash. So the first eight questions, huh? the first eight questions, if any of you has got any notes, and I guarantee you, out of the 52 of you here who's listening to me, I guarantee you, at least about 40, 45 of you, because I've done this talk so many times, I've done classroom talks so many times, and I know people will say no for the first eight, at least some of it. So be careful. Huh? Number nine, do you give money for way to charity? Now, very important. I know some of you pay zakat, some of you give donations, whatever not, right? But do you give away at least 10% of charity? Now, if you don't give 10%, 5% is fine. But why charity? We are sinful creatures. Huh? A lot of us do a lot of rubbish. You know, we drive our car not properly. We park, uh, not double parking. People curse us. Sometimes we do all kinds of nonsense. People curse. And when people curse us, what happens is our dosa nai goes up. So when you give money to charity, at least some blessings will come to you to erase it. And I personally believe in that. Huh? Totally up to you. And of course, number 10, do you have more than one source of income, especially passive income? Okay, more than one source of income, especially passive income. It's very important. Now take a picture of this. So these are the ten things. Now, if you had said no to any of these questions, especially the first eight, okay, the first eight, please relook at your life. Please listen to me for the next half an hour to forty-five minutes, and please do what I ask you to do. If today you don't have enough time, like I say, at the end of the day, I will give you my contact number. Please WhatsApp me or contact Lenny. And, and I will guide you. But it is important for you to understand that you need to take action from here onwards. Yeah? Let me tell you what happens if you don't do anything. After today's talk, uh, still ally. It's okay, lah, Mr. Kati. End of the year, my, my, I'm going to get promotion. You know what? I know I, I, I'm, I'm going to marry a very rich girl. You know, father got a lot of money. If you have all this kind of nonsense, yeah? Let me tell you what happens if you don't do anything. According to survey, according to survey, at the age of 65, if you don't do anything after today, for every 100 people, now 36 of you will be dead by the age of 65. So if you're going to be dead, then don't worry about it. After all, you're going to die. Why are you worried? Eh? If by age of 65, you're going to be dead, then it's okay. But 54 of you will be living on charity. 54 of you are living on charity. Now, I don't know about you. I, I've got two adult children. I don't want to live in my, 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 I want my children to pay for my, or I don't want to depend on the government, you know, to pay the brim, scream, shrimp, shrimp, whatever they pay. Can. I don't want to depend on that. Five will be working. I also don't want to work at the 65. I've already retired at 40, and I wish I had retired earlier, you know, because at the age of 40, I retired. Now I, I enjoy my life. I travel a lot. I do a lot of things. I still do training. I enjoy training. But you can decide to sack your boss. Isn't it nice? You, when you have a lot of money, do you know you can sack your boss? Your boss calls you one day and says, uh, come here. And then I want to, and you say, boss, boss, don't need to scold. Lah. I sack you. I'm leaving my job. Wow. Isn't that good? Eh? That'd be amazing. How many of you would like to sack your boss? Can I see? How many of you will sack your boss? Anybody here? Two, two, two. If you want to sack your boss. 
two, two, two. Unless your boss is listening, like, well, well, I have to. Farhan's question, do we need credit card or not? Farhan, if you, you keep a credit card for emergency purposes only, Farhan, emergency. But my personal recommendation is, if you use it, pay, your, pay everything on time. That's what I'm saying. If you use it, pay on time. Eh? Anybody else? Okay. But maybe some of you are very scared to tell eh? in case your boss knows. Okay. This is what I want you to know. Out of every hundred, only five will be rich and wealthy. That's why you see eh? uh, when, you, when you meet people at work, when you meet people around, you'll see only five people are rich and wealthy. You know why? Because many people do not do financial planning. So hopefully today, you listen to me and you start doing something about your life. Huh? I need you to know about something else. Huh? Whether you like it or not, huh? the value of money will always be against you. Okay? Will always be. You look at this. Huh? In the year 2000, the salary of an individual is about 1,800. Uh, individual salary. Today, salary, this is a new graduate. Huh? New graduate. Salary of a new graduate is about 1,008. Now, salary of a new graduate is about 2,5. I'm taking the lower end. Huh? It's about 2,5. Salary of a new graduate is about 2,5. But in 2000, a house that cost 250,000 is now 750 which is about 200% increase. Car that used to cost 30 is about 60. Tuition 200, now 600. Basic degree 7, now 21,000. Movie ticket 7, now 14. Now, in fact, I think movie ticket is more expensive. I went for movie today uh, at one o'clock this afternoon. See, I go for movie when people are working. Like, y'all are working, right? That's when I go for movie because nobody... In fact, I was in this big cinema in KLCC, only five of us watching movie. Huh? So empty, so nice to watch. Uh, of course, ticket is 20 ringgit. Toll is 150. Um, you know, now it's about 6 ringgit. I'm from Podixen. That was the toll then. And this is it now. Routine will be 77, now 180. Now, let me even 25 now. Now, what I want to tell you is this. In 23 years, salary of a fresh graduate is going to be 40%. Can you see that? In 23 years, from 2023, 20 or 40%. But look at the cost of products and services. The cost of products and services is going to buy uh, 200, 100, 300%. This is the reason why, my friends, you cannot depend on one income anymore already. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot depend on one income. Okay, I'm telling you today, unless you're really, really, really stingy. Like, really, 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 you know, you like, you go to a mama shop to eat nasi kanda, you know, and you when you enter the shop, the mama guy asks you, apu uh, makan, you say, tunggu, huh? You smell and say, okay, okay, chukub, and you walk out. Oh, you go and order, not te tari korang manis, you say, ay swam korang manis. Why? Because it's cut. Oh, you say, roti telo, tamau telo. Uh, then maybe you'll cut costs and you can survive. But otherwise, you need to look at income. Let me tell you something today. Even if you want to look at income, you, it's very important for you to understand, look for only passive income. I'll tell you more about it later, yeah? So you can see, yeah, salary goes up by 40%, but everything goes up by 100 to 200%, yeah? This is the fourth truth about wealth you need to know, huh? Wealth, huh? Okay, so I'm going to talk to you about, sometimes some of you have got misunderstanding about who is wealthy. So I'm going to talk about that now, yeah? Let me, do, let me ask you this question. Actually, the first thing you need to understand, wealth is a process rather than a destination. So remember this, huh? wealth is a process rather than a destination. Okay? Now, let me ask you a question. Okay? Everybody, huh? chat box. Huh? Chat, chat box. Huh? Okay. Tell me, how do, you, how do you define a wealthy person? How do you know somebody is wealthy? Come. Tell me. Tell me now. How do you, how do you know... Somebody is wealthy. Come on. How do you know? That mean, uh, when you look at them, uh, you can tell already they're wealthy. Uh, not, or they, they don't have, how do you know they don't have, that? you don't know. Uh, uh, how do you know somebody is uh, wealthy? Come on, come on. Hey, hello. You all are there now listening to me. Is it only me and Lenny there? Always smiling. Okay. Oh, okay. Now I see it. Okay. Uh, the car they drive. Yeah. Uh, always smiling. Fresh looking. Oh, really? Yeah. Come on, listen. Fresh looking, healthy and wise. Uh. Wow. Krita Meva. Tunjo Kasi's Ankada. Tunjo kasi angkat, okay. Rich. How do you know? Wang Chan, how do you know they are rich? How do you know? Time freedom. Serena, how do you know they have time freedom? They travel a lot. I want you to be specific. Don't use, give me this jargon. Eh? Oh, they are financially free. What do you mean by financial freedom? Oh, they got time freedom. What do you mean by time freedom? How do you know? Time freedom. I, I got time freedom. You know why? I don't work at all. I don't have to work. Today, somebody asked me, Mr. Kati, you want to do training or not? I said, no, la. I, I'm, I don't want to do la. lazy. Lo. You see what I mean, Anna? I, I can choose whether to do or not to do. That is called time freedom, you know. So how do you know? Okay, classy attitude. Ayo, Azlin, classy attitude. Let me tell you something. Many people, pakai baju, pie, kadin, bali rumah makan, sardin lah, Azlin. Many people don't ever think. He don't think he hujan mari, I masuk show mati wan. Akmal, how do you know high income, Akmal? I want you to tell how they walk themselves. Ah. Really, yeah? T.S. Yusuf. Wow, okay. I didn't know that. I need to find the way to why walk just normally. 
living without any how do you know intan living without any problem see many of you are talking about uh, things how do you know people show you as if they are living without them how do you know with a problem no worries maria tol how do you know maria tol i'm asking you the definition of wealthy person in your eyes okay see again chao chi wai you say financial freedom how do you know okay let me tell you something eh? a lot of you will think this way let me tell you this eh? a lot of you will say this way this is what i know many people say big car big house big wallet big diamond ring big wife why big wife yeah, you pay expensive rice eh? buy expensive rice and give let me tell you something see many of you don't realize this okay okay let me define eh? let me define how do you know a wealthy person eh? so let me ask you a first question here who is better off financially tell me a or b a or b okay look at that eh? a okay a or b A is earning five uh, thousand ringgit. B is earning seven thousand ringgit. Okay, who is rich? You tell me. Who is financially better? A or B? Come on, guys, participate, participate. There are fifty of you. Only twenty of you keep answering. Oh, a lot of B, 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 B. Yeah. Okay, a lot of people B, 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 B. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay. Ah. Uh, okay. Let me. This is this is the problem. I want you to understand something today. Ah. Uh? I'm a, you must read the book called yeah, the millionaire next door there's a book called the millionaire next door you must read the book sometimes you don't even know the millionaire next door you know you, because you always look at the big car and the big house let me tell you a secret i'm going to show you something but what if i tell you that a spends 4800 ringgit every month b spends 7300 i repeat ah huh? b earns 7000 but spends 7300 a earns 5000 but spends 4800 now let me ask you now a question who do you think is better off a or b Ah, suddenly everybody took a little chirita. Everybody saying is A A. You know why? Very very important. Why can B spend seven thousand three hundred because credit card? Credit card why? Oh, sinang la, tachiko driven tapala. Why is it that B spend seven thousand and A spend only four thousand? Because A will go and drink in the mama shop, but B ah every morning must carry a Starbucks coffee. You know. 10 ringgit to 14 ringgit or hot chocolate the a go to milo shop and uh, uh, mama shop and drink a milo but then uh, b must go to a uh, 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 starbucks and buy hot chocolate Now, i'm not saying don't drink i'm not saying that don't get me wrong i go to starbucks as well but what i'm trying to say is don't mistaken people that they are so rich just by looking at their salary it is not true it's not true okay second question ah huh? okay now i've got two people here a and b A owns a MyB, B owns a BMW. Who is rich? A or B? Okay, who is rich now? A or B? A owns a My uh, MyB, B. Okay. Ah, uh, now A A Y suddenly so clever and you know, suddenly all very clever. All say A A A A A. But I thought I thought many of you when you see a BMW you say wow very rich. You see a Mercedes you say very rich. You see a Lexus you say very rich. Yeah. How come suddenly took a chirita? Ah, you see this is the problem. Starting from today, I hope this is called smart, huh? Smart way. You see. Smart way of looking. Actually, the definition. I repeat today. The definition of wealthy person is your wealth ratio must be more than one. I'll tell you. It's point number four. I'll show you later. Definition of the wealth ratio is not a car or house. Definition of wealth ratio is. Uh, definition of a wealthy person is wealth ratio is more than one. I'll tell you later. What if I were to tell you A actually has no debt, paid cash. But B owes the bank three hundred thousand. I mean, if I were to come to somebody and tell you, and tell you, huh, I don't tell you what car they drive. I won't tell you what car they drive. I say, hey, A, A, huh, debt free, you know. And B, ah, huh, wow, he owns the bank. He owes the bank three hundred thousand, you know. Now suddenly, who do you think is better off? All of you will say A is better off because you you don't want to have this some person with so much of that. I mean, if you're going to marry somebody or you're going to ask your son or daughter to marry somebody, ah. Huh, You would possibly want you if I mean unless you are looking at that Tretala, then it's just too bad lah. You will probably marry somebody who's got a BMW, but then hutang sekeliling si pinggang atau hutang seluar badan lah. Very important today. Starting from today, understand this part, yeah. So don't look at the car. So you remember, wealth is a process, not the destination. Just because somebody drives a BMW, just because somebody lives in a bungalow house, just because somebody has got a B, uh, Mercedes Benz, just because somebody travel, you just because of that. They are rich and poor. Never, never, never. Let me tell you something, my friend. You want to have a peace of, uh, peaceful mind. You want to be able to sleep at night. You want to be able to be debt free. Uh, very important, ah. Huh? Second one, ah. Huh? Wealth is about building net worth. Net worth means taduh hutang. I repeat, ah. Huh? Building net worth. Net worth means taduh hutang. You, you. Many people in the Forbes list, all ah. Huh? Many people got hutang. You say, wow, Tony Fernandez very rich. But you do not know Tony on uh, uh, Tony Fernandez uh, owes the bank. 
hundreds of millions of dollars, you know, through his company, but he's still, if he don't pay, he'll be in trouble as well. So many people might not know this. I'm talking about you as a layman here, listening to my talk, I'm telling you today, don't get mistaken. I'll give you an example. You have this guy, this one person who lives in a moderate house, huh? small sofa, uh, small TV, and maybe a one door fridge, you know, one door fridge, huh? you can see the top of the fridge. Huh? This is one person. Then there's another person who lives, you know, uh, A and B. Yeah? This is A, this is B. Yeah? So A, uh, normal, uh, you know, place and then one door fridge. B, yeah? he lives, you know, look at the family picture, look at the sofa, look at the plasma TV and got a three door fridge, you know, three door fridge, you know, three door fridge, must put a stool to see on top. Now A, moderate life. B, very expensive life. Now who is rich? <laughs> Maria told A is me, what do we? Okay. Uh, uh, okay, so see, now you all are smart. Okay, so this is what smart money is all about. Be smart. You know why? Because A buys everything cash, but B buys from Cots Member. You know, if you go to Cots Member, eh? you can buy a fridge, you can buy a TV, you can buy, you go to buy a car. So some people pay on credit, some people pay on cash. So don't look at the car. But listen, guys, I want you to know I'm 60 years old, I've lived. This long, I've done so many people. I've met, so I have met people who drive a BMW asking whether it's 10 ringgit. My friends, eh, ask me 10 ringgit for the, they can pour petrol. I will tell you this. I've got people who drive a BMW. Now, I'm not saying all people who drive BMW are bad or they're poor. I'm not saying that. Do not. I'm just saying don't be mistaken by what people drive, where they live. Don't be mistaken. Very dangerous, okay? Now, the third truth is very simple. Eh? So, first one is, uh, you know why I brought Cots member? Because let's say a uh, Cots member, then it doesn't matter whether you're a general manager, whether you're a senior manager, whether you're a CEO, uh, but if you buy from Cots member, Tiga Bulan Tadabaya Sumo Ganatari. Faham da? Your creator, la, your creator, Tiga Bulan Tadabaya, Enam Bulan Tadabaya, what happened? Tare wa. They never say, oh, that's a clock, uh, Tare Chapat. Um, this is a general manager, Jangan Tare. Have you ever come across this way? The bank says, oh, he's a general manager, oh, he's an accountant, he's a lawyer, he's a professional. His car, 12 months never pays an amount. So oh, this guy is a clerk, you know, he's a clerk, you know, uh, six months never pay tari. No, as far as the bank is concerned, as long as you don't pay one day tari. Why? Cash is king. So it is, of course, you go to court members, you can buy everything for your house. Right? Third thing, wealth is about how long can you survive? Now, if I ask you, do you enjoy your job? Many people normally say no. Lah. But I want to ask you a question here, okay? I want to ask you a question here, okay? Wealth is about how long can you survive if you lose your job. If you lose your job, how long can you survive? And Robert Kiyosaki says this. He says, you know what? If you lose your job today and within one month you, are, you, you cannot survive, huh? you cannot survive huh? for more than a month, you're broke. If you can survive one to three months, you are, how do, they, how do you call it? Uh, Chukko Mankan. If you can survive three to six months without a job, you're satisfied. You're satisfactory. Lah. Okay lah. But if you can survive six months to two years without a job, you're well off. If you are two to five years without a job, you're wealthy. If you're five years and above, then you know what? You're ultra wealthy. That means you don't need to worry. You don't need to work. So this is another definition of wealth. Actually, that's why I asked you just now, do you save 10% of your salary? And I asked you, do you have six months of cash or not? So why? why? Because if you have six months of cash, if you lose your job, at least you can survive for six months, look for another job. Many of you, if you lose your job today, you're in trouble, you know. You're in trouble. Dig the well before you need the water. Your car got spare tire. How many you got spare income? No spare income. If any one of you here have no spare income, I, I do a coaching program to teach people how to make money. So later when Chalini asks you to fill up evaluation forms, you put it there, you are interested in you know, being an entrepreneur or uh, passive income, I teach you how, yeah? But the one later. So the fourth one is very simple. Like that. This is the fourth one I told you. Wealth is about increasing your wealth ratio. Remember I told you about wealth ratio? Increasing your wealth ratio. Many people don't know. You know, I, as an accounting graduate from University of Malaya, many of my friends who studied with me, now they are CEOs of many companies and we meet, you know, we meet, even my Bank Negara, I left Bank Negara, you know, if I, you know, my people, my friends who live in Bank Negara, uh, work in Bank Negara, some of them have been promoted. You know, the new governor is a person I, I studied with in University of Malaya as a governor now, you know. So I know a lot of people in Bank Negara. But let me ask you a question. Eh? You don't judge anybody by the car they drive, the place they live, but you judge a person by the wealth ratio. What is a wealth ratio? What is a wealth ratio? Let me show you. Eh? Well, this is according to Robert Kiyosaki. Wealth ratio is where your monthly passive income is more than your expenses. Now, Many of you might not like your job. 
but you still go to work tomorrow. Why? I mean, if I tell you, hey, you don't like it, you don't go la, or you cannot la, Mr. Kati. I must go. Why? Because you can monthly expenses. So only reason I will tell you today, huh? I mean, there are 50 of you here. How many of you love your job? Maybe there'll be one or two. La. Maybe, you know, there are some weird people around in life. Huh? Or maybe you love your job. Okay, but five of you love your job. But many of you, a job is a job, is a job, is a job. Why? Because your expenses. But if you can make passive income, which is alternate income, which your income is more than your expenses, then you don't have to worry about work. What? And you're wealthy. Now you continue to work. La. I, I still do training programs. I love training. I still do training for many banks. I do training for many telecommunications. I do training for Petronas, DRB Highcom, you know, uh, what do you call it, Tabong Haji. I do for many companies. I do training programs, you know, many organizations. But I do because I enjoy it. And if I don't want to, I don't want to do. Why? Because I make passive income from different sources. I'll share with you the passive income sources, but you need to decide whether you want to make passive income or not. But if your passive income is more than expenses, you don't need to worry about it. Correct, right? So... You know why I retired at age of 40? You know, you know, just now Lenny said I retired at age of 40. You know why? Not because I had 1 million, 2 million ringgit. Because when I was at the age of 40, I had two children. My expenses were about 8,000 ringgit. But from the age of 33, I started to look at passive income. And at the age of 40, my passive income was 10,000. My expense was 8,000. I retired. So I retired at the age of 40 because my passive income. What is passive income? Uh, money coming from your fixed deposit, money coming from your rental income, uh, money coming from businesses that give you passive income, money coming from your investment, your dividend income. You know, I, I do a lot of investment, so money coming from my investment income. So this income that you come, I also have many businesses. Huh? I've tried insurance, I've tried mutual fund, I've tried direct selling, I've tried MLM, I've tried everything. Looking at where I can make passive income. And when you make passive income, which is more than your expenses, no need to work lah. So I decided to sack my boss and I don't need to work at all because my passive income. So the definition of wealth is this. Wealth ratio must be more than one. I want to tell you today, starting from today, in fact, whenever I go and meet people, people ask me, Mr. Kati, where do you live? Huh? Mr. Kati, what car you drive? Huh? Mr. Kati, you know, that kind of a question. Huh? I just have to turn back and say, can I ask what's your wealth ratio? Huh? Because your wealth ratio must be more than one means your passive income must be more than one. And I can guarantee you, huh? I, many of you here, you don't have passive income or maybe you are making passive income but lesser than one. If it's more than one, because you cannot cut down expenses. Somebody who wrote just now, invest, inflation is evil. Exactly. You cannot. Your petrol price will never go down. Your roti china price will never go down. Your mee goreng price will never go down. So what must you do? You must look at alternate income. Yeah? You become financially free when your passive income exceeds your expenses. This is why T. Harbaker. Okay? So these are the five mistakes. Now I'm going to give you tips. I'm going to give you five tips for you to be able to become financially free. But before that, let me tell you five mistakes people make. Yeah, Five mistakes people make. Now, before that, let me tell you, show this. Huh? I think some of you might want to take a picture of this. Huh? Take a picture of this. These are the four truths of wealth. Please take a screenshot of this. Please take a screenshot of this so you know that these are the four things that you need to know. And a screenshot on this. Okay, this is what you call wealth ratio. And when your wealth ratio is more than one, huh? passive income, Okay, maybe I should show you the earlier one. Passive income must be more than expenses. Huh? When you've got passive income, which is more than expenses, your wealth ratio is more than one. And that's when it becomes, okay? Like, like let me look at the, let me show you the five mistakes people make. Yeah, five mistakes. Are we all good? If you guys are enjoying my talk, you're learning something. Are we learning something? Please type 333. Three, three. So I know you're learning something, so I can continue. Oh, there, stop now. Very good. Now, many of the things I'm sharing is in my YouTube channel. Huh? Uh, you can always go and listen, uh, watch that. Uh, in fact, my YouTube channel has got more information because today I have only one hour. My YouTube channel, I do talks for one hour, one and a half hours. And all, huh? Top five mistakes people make. Number one, not starting early enough. Many people don't start. Like some of you here, uh, no la, Mr. Kati, wait la, my, if I get promotion, uh, I get more money, I will do something about my life. Uh, some of you, you know, a lot of us, that kind of thing. Like, oh, when I get married, uh, uh, then I will have double income. When you get married, you have double income and double expenses. Then children come along, then, oh, oh God. So start now, start now, start now. Doesn't matter what your age, start now. Don't think, oh, you, I wish I had met Mr. Kati many years ago. Start now. Don't worry about, you wish, don't wish, wish we all, okay? Number two, many of you know financial vision of planning. Please, starting today, I'll tell you the habits. One of it is you must budget. You must budget. At least until your money is a lot, la. then no need to budget. La. But now, very important. Because remember, bagai kara diberi bunga, you need to budget, you need to keep track expenses so that God will give you more. Universe will give you more. Number three, 
record, record keeping. I already told you, must keep record of your expenses and income. Very important. Now there are so many apps that you can download and use. Don't use your app to play games. Don't use all kind of apps, you know. A lot of you on TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. Let me tell you something. Get an app that you can keep track of your keep track of your income and expenses. That is the most powerful app. You download that. I will tell you a lot of good things will come to you. High interest debt. Don't go to you know what is a high interest debt. The two you got four loans: eh? car loan, housing loan, uh, personal loan, credit card. The high interest debt is credit card and personal loan. High interest debt. The low interest debt is actually your car, car loan next to it, then your housing loan. If you have money to pay, don't pay off your housing loan. Don't pay off your car loan. If you have money to pay, settle your personal loan, settle your credit card loan. These two are high interest. That's a very easy to get. You go to any shopping center, Ambikat, at a pay slip. Ambikat, Ambikat become very expensive. Personal loan, you go to certain banks, anytime you go pay slip, can give you personal loan. Very high. Do not do that. And number five, don't follow the masses. Don't follow the masses. They mean jangan ikut orang lain lah. The majority of the people in the world are miskin. Majority of people in Malaysia are miskin. Majority of people in your company is miskin. Majority of your friends cukup makan. You need to understand that don't follow the masses. Follow them. The minority are rich. Read books. Do things that other people. You know, I was in Bangalore. Every morning when I was working in Bangalore, what do we do? Like all of you, we meet it for breakfast. We talk about other people. Lunch time, what do we do? We meet again for lunch and talk about other people. What do I do in tea break time? Tea break time, we meet again after work. Lah. Meet again, talk about the people. What do we do next day? We again, we talk, what we talk the day before to confirm everything. Listen, that's why we are broke. Because we follow the masses. Don't follow the masses. Please follow the minority. Some of the things I'm sharing with you, to like, like financial wealth ratio, nobody shares with you. Because I'm a minority. I'm a minority. I'm telling you today, many people won't share. You know what? You go to many, many businesses, they'll tell you, oh, buy an expensive car, buy an expensive house, buy, listen to me, don't do that. Sleep well at night because you don't have kutan. So very important, eh? jangan follow majority. I hope after today, you will, you will listen to what I say. You don't have to follow what I say, lah, but I hope you'll do some of the things I share with you. Yeah. So these are the five habits you must have. Let me share with you the five habits. Okay, let me go back to this. Please take a screenshot. Please take a screenshot. Okay, let's go on. Five positive habits. Number one, write down your daily expenses every day for the next three months at least. Starting from today, starting from tomorrow. Lah, or today also can lah, start, write down your expenses every day for the next three months. Let me tell you what happens if you do. Huh? Let me tell you this. Huh? Listen very carefully, my friend. Huh? Three things happen when you do this. Huh? Three things happen when you write your expenses every day. Three things. A, okay, you realize where you waste your money. Suddenly, you realize, oh my God, I've been wasting money buying food from outside. Lah. Oh my God, I've been paying for the grab people so much money. Oh my God, uh, you'll, you'll know the, oh my God, where you spend money. So you'll know how you waste money. Oh my God, I've been actually blanjaing all my friends, you know. So you'll realize what you're doing. So that's now A, yeah? when you write down expenses. B, you'll now learn how to budget for next month. you learn, okay, lah. this month you write, next month you budget. Okay, I will, you know what I used to do, my friend? I would put aside and say, okay, this month, I'll tell my two children, I'll say, okay, all of us budget. Even my children get ampa also, I tell them how to budget, eh? allocate it. So when I when I told my children, I said, we have put aside 300 ringgit to eat outside. So if first 10 days we go McDonald's, come back, McDonald's, come back, finish already, then after that, eat at home. Don't come and ask me and say, I want McDonald's because the budget finish already. Then your children will listen to you. But if you don't have a budget, uh, you use your credit card, lah. you take a personal loan, lah. you always don't have money. Lah. Because you don't budget. It's very important that you budget and train your children to budget as well. Eh? Number two, uh, create monthly budget. So first, write down, oh, sorry, sorry, I forgot. Uh, sorry. Three things happen eh, when you do this. A, uh, you know where you waste your money. B, uh, you will know how to budget. And C, C, very important when you write down. Eh? C, eh? God, eh? Tuhan, eh? Uh, the universe watching from the top and say, hey, bagus lah, like DNA. Wow, really writing expenses every day. Huh? Okay, okay, okay. Now I give you Rizuki. I will tell you today, huh? promise you, huh? promise you, huh? three months you write down expenses. Huh? In the next three months, you will see huh? income will come. Income will come. Some or other money will come from here. Money will come from here. I am shocked when, when I tell people, people say, you know, Mr. Kati, so surprising. Huh? Suddenly I had a durian ronto. Suddenly I got promoted. Suddenly my salary go up. How come? Huh? Ah, because they write this. It's very important. Just like when you do your zikr, when you do your prayers, when you ask for forgiveness, when you do your gratitude, money will come. 
Same thing here. You write down expenses for three months. Remember I told you? It's not like the monkey is given a garland because when you write down expenses, you're no more the monkey because you're taking note. And God says, good, I'll give you money. So number two, based on that, create your budget now. How much you want to spend, what we want to spend and keep to that. Remember I told you, when your salary comes, take aside 10% and put aside from the balance you budget. Yeah. Number three, consider higher in some of all that. All your hutang hutang, consider higher that. When you go to uh, buy a car, and then the guy says, uh, you can uh, under boli buy dalam similar tahun, you know. And you say, and, and then you know what most of you do? Ah, yeah, similar tahun na. Sebelas tahun tabli ka? Or the, the guy says, you buy dalam lima tahun. Oh, uh, similar tahun tabli ka? Actually, what you should do is when you go to the car, when you buy a car and they say, uh, pay in nine years. Huh? And you say, no, 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 I want to pay in five years. You take a personal loan huh? and then they say, pay in five years. You say, no, 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 I want to pay in three years. If they say, take a car, a housing loan, huh? pay for 25 you say, no, 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 I want to pay in 15 years. Because once you do that, your instrument is higher, but after a while, you'll get used to it. Just like everything else in life. We got used to the roti channel price high. We got used to the petrol price high. We got used to everything which is higher, right? So get used to it, but consider higher. You know why? You want to be debt free quickly. Please take a screenshot because I'm going to move to the next uh, two. Take a screenshot. One, two, three. I'm going to go four and five after this. Yeah. Okay. Four. Starting from today, when you get your salary, when you get your salary, yeah, allocate like this. This is how you should allocate. Starting from today, when you get a salary. So katakan gaji anda ada lima ribu ringgit. When your gaji ada lima puluh ringgit, lima puluh lima ribu ringgit. 60% is where you take for your electricity, water bill, your makan, makan, everything. 60%, which is tiga ribu ringgit. Seplo percent, which is lima ratu ringgit. Keep aside for you to go for a holiday, with a have fun with your family, go for movies and all. 10% keep aside for investment. 10, you don't know where to invest? Contact me, I'll teach you where to invest. Don't worry about it. Now that you know me, later you, I'll give you my contact number, you keep in touch with me. 10% put in savings for either develop yourself by buying books or put for emergency. 10% give for charity. Now, Assuming gaji lima ribu, kalau tiga ribu tak cukup, okay fine. Gaji lima ribu, empat ribu you keep, eighty percent you keep. But five percent for play, five percent for investment, five percent for saving, five percent charity. Very 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 important. This is called different jars. You you do this bukan senang eh, but once you do this, you can live. Now many of you need to understand. You might say, Mister Kati, I cannot live. My salary cukup makan. Let me tell you something eh. Last year salary rendah pun cukup makan. End of the year, salary go up. Next year, pun cukup makan. Very important. You need to be disciplined. Eat in more, not eat out. It's very important that you need to do that. And number five is create multiple pass sources of income, multiple passive income options. You need to look at passive income. Remember why? Because I told you wealth ratio. Wealth ratio, remember, is passive income over expenses. So if you have active income, which is salary, you need to make passive income. Yeah? Okay? Must make passive income. All right. Mass make passive income. Okay. I'm going to show you who makes passive income shortly. Yeah. Take a picture. Take a picture of this. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. Any questions or not? Now, please put in the chat box very quickly. Any questions about what I've shared so far? Because after this, I'm going to show you how to become rich. Okay. This one also very good. You can manage your money. But next, I'll show you how to make passive income. Any questions, anyone? No questions. So let me continue. Okay. Let me continue. Huh? If no questions, okay. So how do you reach financial freedom, which is more money than ever? Huh? Okay, financial freedom. Basically, okay, I, I see one question, I think. Where do I sign up for the rest of you? <laughs> uh, thank you, Serena. Iv Iviana, Serena. Serena, you fill up the evaluation form later, Serena. I'll give you a number. Then uh, Miss Lenny will get in touch with you, okay? The ability of an individual. Financial freedom is the ability of an individual to walk away from, I already told you this. Huh? If you walk away from your job without worrying about money, then you are rich. Financial freedom is dream lifestyle. Financial freedom and you have time, money, and health. You must have all three. You must be healthy. You must have time. You have money. Then only you're financially freedom. Otherwise, financial freedom is not about gaji. Eh? Financial freedom is not about gaji. It's about how you manage your money, how you allocate your money, how you save money, how do you invest. Very, 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 very. But many people don't realize this. You know, I, I, I in my talks, in my, my, my investment talk, I teach people, should you invest in insurance or should you put it in mutual fund? Should you put in uh, insurance? Should you buy shares or should you buy uh, currencies? Uh, should you put in EPF or not? Uh, should you take out your money at the age of 50 or 55 from EPF or not? Because everything has got pros and cons. Should I put in FD or not? Or should I? Uh, so everything has a pro. But many people don't realize all that. Yeah? Let's continue. Uh, and of course, joy and happiness. Uh, this is uh, financial freedom. But uh, let me move on. 
So three steps for financial freedom. Number one, you must calculate your net worth. Okay, you must calculate your net worth. And very important, financial freedom is where you calculate. How do you calculate net worth? Let me just uh, share with you. Uh, what you need to do is this. Please write this down eh? because I don't have a slide for that. How do you calculate net worth? Very simple. You must take out an A4 paper. You must take out an A4 paper. Not today, la. Uh, not now, la. Take out an A4 paper. Divide into half. Divide into half. One play. One side you put there. What I own. Apakah miliki saya? One side you put there. Ap, what I owe. Apakah hutang saya? Apakah apa hutang saya? Okay. So you take out a piece of paper. Divide by two. One side you put apa yang saya miliki. Kereta saya miliki. I have a house. I have a car. I have jewelry. I have savings. I have, what do you own? I've got um, insurance, cash value. Uh, I've got, what do you own? You know, I've got some stock, shares. Okay, these are what you own, eh? And put the value. What is the market value of your car? What is the market value of your house? What is the worth of your gold? How much are you saving to add up? On the other side, you put what you owe. Car loan, how much? Housing loan, how much? Car loan, how much? Uh, credit card loan, how much? Personal loan, how much? Mother-in-law, if she's still in-law, not outlaw, how much? Put, then you add up. Now, very important, eh? very important. Your what you own must be more than what you uh, owe. So your net worth must always be positive. The meaning, what you own minus what you owe must be positive. If it is negative, then you must remember you are in trouble. So it's very important that you must start planning, which is why number two comes around, eh? where you take your cash reserves and start paying off your loan and start investments. These are the two things you must do. Why can you remember or not? If you remember, I told you a salary. You remember your salary? Remember, I told you a salary, you must divide and put aside 10% for investment. And I said 10% for emergency. So, whatever money you can have here, you can pay off some of your loans so that your net worth becomes positive. Otherwise, you will find that. So, color the color bonus, color bonus, you pay two, three months of your car installment or pay two, three months of your debit card or credit card. I'm oh, sorry, your credit card. Clear it, clear it. Don't keep. So first, you must calculate your net worth. Make sure your what you own is more than what you owe. Now, like I said, you can WhatsApp me. I'll give you guidance in the future, but you can do that. Number two, create cash reserve. Please remember, anytime you have extra money, keep for emergency, keep for investment. Very, very, very important. You know, like I told you what, many of you will say, I, uh, I wish I bought a house during pandemic. Car price was low. I, uh, I wish I bought gold. No, not gold price is going up. Hello, when are you going to have money? When are you going to have money? You want durian to run to one, run to run to one, you know. So you must deliberately from your salary put aside. Husband and wife, sit down with your wife, sit down with your husband and discuss. Okay, every month, kita ambil, kita ada tabung. Every month, we put aside 100 ringgit, 100 ringgit, 5 ringgit, 5 ringgit. Put aside. In fact, I'll tell you a secret. Do you remember one of the things I said? Put aside at least 10% of your salary for play, for fun, for holidays. You know what? If you have 5,000 salary, if every month you can put aside 500, 500, even okay lah, put 300, 300, 300. Dalam 1 tahun, 10 bulan, 10 bulan, you got 3,000 ringgit. You know what? You can take your family and go for a nice holiday. You know what? Your family deserves it. You deserve it. Tapi, eh, what happens to all of you is, every time you want to go for holiday, tak cukup. So, pakai kerja ikan lah. Because you don't deliberately put your savings. And the last one is, again, eh, focus on obtaining passive income. Focus on obtaining passive income. When it comes to passive income, I, I'm going to take about another 15 minutes. Huh? So I hope you don't mind. It's almost 9.30. I'm going to take another 15 minutes to finish off my talk. Uh, passive income, uh, very important. So take a snapshot of this, screenshot, calculate your network, create cash reserve, and of course, increase your passive income. Yeah, So that your wealth ratio model. Very, very powerful. You know, I, I, anybody I meet up, today I met uh, two ladies from Petronas when I went to KLCC. I was talking to these two ladies. Then I, I met another lady working for United Nations. I talk to people. I just, you know, hi, you know, you work here, you know, the kind of thing, you know. When, when I'm sitting down for Makan, I met them, right? And, and when we're talking, I always say, you know what, always remember this, yeah? They ask me, because they know I'm a financial consultant, I, when I'm introducing, what is your tip? I say your wealth ratio must be more than one. And that's why I'm telling all of you. Wealth ratio must be more than one. What is wealth ratio? Your passive income must be more than expenses. So who makes passive income? That's what I already told you, huh? Eh? Wealth ratio more than one means passive income must be more than expenses. Eh? So who makes passive income? Who makes passive income? Eh? According to Robert Kiyosaki, who wrote his book called Cash Flow Quadrant. Eh? In this book, he actually tells you that. Now, by the way, eh, Robert Kiyosaki has got many, 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 many books. Eh? Let me tell you something. No need to read all the books. All the books talk about the same thing, eh? which is the cash flow quadrant. So you buy one of his books, also you buy it, but you can practice. Eh? One of the books are fine. This is what Robert Kiyosaki says. He says these are the four quadrants. E is employee. 
um, uh, as itself. Well. Let me tell you the unfortunate truth. Huh? Those of you in the blue quadrant, which is you are an employee, those of you in the self-employed quadrant where you own a restaurant, you own your own business, you are an accountant, you're a lawyer, you own your accounting firm, you own a, your clinic, whatever you are here, you make active income because you can work for your job. You're an audit firm, you must work for an audit firm. I've got a friend who every day slogs at the audit firm. Every day because he's got 30 employees, must pay for salary, works, but hardly has enough sleep, very stressed out because self-employed. I've got a doctor who the, when the lo locum don't come, he has to work hard. Cannot go for holiday. Have you seen any restaurant close for two weeks or not? Have you seen any clinic close for two weeks or not? Have you seen any doctors uh, who close their clinic for two weeks? No, because they cannot. They cannot. So if you are in the E quadrant and the S quadrant, you are in the, and I'm telling many of you are here. Now I was here. I was in Bank Nagara, remember? I was in Bank Nagara. I was, then I went to self-employed where I started my own company. Then I realized I should go to the B and the S quadrant. B means I must own businesses. And I means I must be an investor. Of course, investor means must have to do it. So what I decided to do, that's why I went and checked out MLM business, direct selling business, uh, insurance business, unit trust business. Today, I'm not going to talk to you and tell you which is the best, which is not. I won't tell you all that because that's not my job. Okay, when you are acquainted with me or you come for my other talks, I will tell you what are the things I do and you can be part of my team. But today, I want to tell you that you need to look for businesses that can give you the money so you can do investment. Of course, then, I became an investor. So investment, before because I wanted to invest, but I didn't have money. Like many of us here, we don't have money. So we need to go into business, yeah? So why is active income not good? Because you're not paid. How many of you are overpaid? I mean, don't answer the question, but I can guarantee you, I don't think any of you are overpaid. Most of you will say you're underpaid. Then why you go to work tomorrow? Because you are underpaid, but because your wealth ratio is less than one. See, when your wealth ratio is less than one, even if your boss bullies you, even if you're underpaid, you won't go to work. I mean, you will still go to work. Why? Because you need the money, right? And of course, you always think that maybe if I change job better, I change job better, I change job better. Listen, wherever you go, you think the grass is greener, but you go there, you see, you lalang. Wherever you go, you think that, you know, you've got monkeys in your company, you go there, there are also monkeys there. Don't get me wrong. I'm telling the truth, you know, because wherever you go, you still have to deal with people. So I need you to understand, be in your employment, no problem, but look at passive income. Don't go to another job because another job will have another problem. You still deal with people. You still have got, you're underpaid, you know, so you must be thinking about that. If you are self-employed, what is the problem? Uh, time and money. Time and money, you know what I mean by time and money? The more you work, spend more time, you have more money. But the problem is when you have more time you spend, you make more money, but you don't have money, you don't have time to spend the money because you're so busy and so tired. Restaurant owner open 24 hours, but then he doesn't have rest. You work long hours, doesn't have rest. Doctor open cleaning long hours, no rest, money good, no use also. And 87 of all self-employed businesses go bankrupt. Huh? I don't know whether you know this. Huh? According to Kiyosaki and many researchers, that's why in your neighborhood, you know, Taman Taman, you see a lot of business, people open business, go bankrupt. People, listen, my friend, if any of you want to start a business and you want to start a business, talk to me first. I will tell you, I'll give you advice. I won't take your money. Don't worry. You don't need to pay me anything. I'll give you advice because 87% of all self run business go bankrupt. I know people open restaurant, go bankrupt, open laundry, go bankrupt, open uh, cleaning. Go bankrupt. Many people I know. I work with people now. I work on businesses. Yeah. I work with doctors who are now letting go of the clinic because they just cannot take it. I know people who are arrested who are letting go of the rest of them because it is not easy. Yeah? Then you need to have capital and you need to have expertise. Well. Come again. So this is the problem with active income. So you can, of course, if you have money, yeah? if you have money, you can, of course, invest. Lah. I told you why investment is stock, unit trust, bonds, properties, currencies, and commodities. You can do all this, but you need money, correct or not? So many of you might not have money. If you have money, fine. I do investment talks. Maybe you can join for one of my investment talks. Uh, keep in touch with me. Then I'll tell you when I do the talk. Lenny will inform you. Then you can come. But at this point in time, I need you to understand that you need to really, really look at passive income. There are three ways to make passive income. Three ways. First way to make passive income is based on talent and creativity, which is, for example, uh, you sing a hit song and then put on TikTok, put on YouTube, and you become an influencer. Wow, make a lot of money. Oh. But I know a lot of you cannot do that, right? Because you don't have talent and creativity, or maybe when you when you are talented, okay, but your father knocked your head when you're small, half the brain did cannot. Or you write. Now I I I I I I can sing. My wife used to tell me, Wow, my God, you can go very far. I go very excited. Then I say, Really? And then she said, The further you go, the better. Oh my God. So you know what it meant, eh? But I've written some books. I've written my books are in Amazon. 
uh, e-books. I've written some e-books. So I make money from. So this is how I make passive income. Huh? One of my passive income is through my e-books. Uh, you can invent something commercially viable. Well, I'm not good at that, so I don't make passive income here. Uh, I do make passive income in, with properties and FD. Uh, franchises, I do personal franchises. I don't do corporate franchises, but you need money. Franchises is like this, like you buy a McDonald's outlet, 2.5 million. You buy a Papa Rich. Hey, Papa Rich no more, yeah? Uh, Papa Rich, like you buy a McDonald's, the Papa is rich, but you become poor. Um, Secret recipe, 1 million. Uh, Old Town White Coffee, 1 million. So these are our franchises. Fixed deposit, do you know if you want to earn... Huh? 5,000 ringgit every month from FD, eh? 5,000 every month. Eh? You need to have about, about almost four or five million in the bank. Monday, I did it. Even if you want rental income, one house costs you 500, 600,000. Rental is only about 1,000. But you need to have 500,000. If you want 10,000 ringgit, you need to have 10 property can. So this is based on capital. So this is the reason why when I looked at businesses, I decided to look for, because I didn't have money, but I had a lot of time in my hand. So that's why I went into direct selling and uh, passive income uh, businesses to look at it, okay? Uh, created uh, direct selling businesses, joined direct selling businesses, joined network marketing businesses. I went into insurance business. I was a great Eastern life, uh, looked at insurance. I went into public, uh, public mutual, mutual fund businesses. Then they're all got pros and cons, you know? Currently, of course, currently I'm very active in online shopping business. I do an online I have a business in 14 countries. And I do online shopping. I teach people about online shopping, okay? Uh, and you can make money, okay? You can make money. Within five, five, six months, you can make easily about five-figure income, but online. Huh? So there are many things you can do if you don't have money. Because online is very cheap. You don't need to have capital. But these are the ways for you to look at options, yeah? So um, so these are, the, these are the ways you make passive income. Like I told you, go to my YouTube channel or keep in touch with me or, you know, um, fill up the evaluation form or come for my coaching program or entrepreneurship program, then I'll inform you when I'm doing my talks, you can come for that. But then I will give you more details because like I said, today time is limited. I'm going to finish up the talk by telling you three mindset of the rich people. Three mindset of rich. See, a lot of people don't realize this. Sometimes it's the mindset, you know. Like for example, if you if you every day have breakfast with the friends who are broke, you'll always be broke. If you, if you are mixing with friends who tell you, you should buy gold, but you ask them, do you buy gold? They say, no money. If you tell, talk to your friends, hey, you should buy, uh, uh, you go and do Forex. You ask them, do you mean Forex? Oh, I don't like to take risk. If you ask people, do you buy share? I ask you to buy share, but they don't. See, don't listen to people who are not rich. People who complain about your job, people, they are not rich. So you need to understand uh, three mindsets of the rich. Number one, number one, rich focus on opportunities, poor focus on obstacles. The next time somebody calls you up and say, hey, I've got a business, you just say, hey, okay, let me have a look at it. Does it make passive income? Because Mr. Karthi said, must make passive income. And that is the first question you must ask people. Anybody call you and say, hey, I've got a business, say, can make passive income or not? Passive income means you, one day, you can walk out of the business and still make, like, like, like FD is passive income. You put the money, every month make money. Dividend is passive income. You invest, every month you make money. That, every year you make money. That's passive income. Like insurance business or unit trust or MLM business, when you build the business, you walk away, you make money. That's called passive income. But a lot of us actually look at obstacles. So starting from now, don't laugh when people call you and say, hey, I've got a business. I want to no, 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 laugh. not easy, man. Cannot, man. Go and check it out. Rezeki datang, jangan tolak. Bila rezeki datang, janganlah tolak. Pergi tengok dulu. No need to come in. No need to join. No need to do anything. But go and check it out. Lah. When rezeki datang, uh, pintu belakang, you do pintu depan. So it's very important. Number one. Number two. Always remember this. Eh? Admire rich and successful people. Don't resent them. Don't criticize. Every time you are driving your small car and you BMW go by, you say, hm, mesti ambil raswa. Tengok, bawa BMW. Mesti raswa. Hey, don't like that. Oh, what for buy BMW? One scratch, eh? 10,000 again. Pass a big bungalow house. Look at a bungalow house. Ah, untuk apa? Electricity mahal. Untuk apa? Lima orang gaji mesti ada. And this is called eh? <laughs> PhD. Prasan Hasan Dengki. In Islam, eh, one of the worst things to do is PhD, Prasan Hasad Dengki. Dengki is really bad. But many of you do that. So when you have this Prasan Hasad Dengki for people who drive BMW, Mercedes Benz, or big in a big house, huh? or you would resent rich people, you know what? You will never be rich. Why? Because the universe thinks you don't want to be rich. Because you people drive BMW, you Maradia, Maki, Hamon, people live in a big house. Oh, all these people in country high now, oh, kaya betul. Ah, then you will never be able to buy a big house. Why? Because you're the Dengki. 
and the universe or your subconscious mind think, oh, you don't want bungalow, oh, you don't want BMW, oh, you tak suka orang kaya, so money won't come. Because you sendiri tolak rezeki kamu. You sendiri tolak. I'm not saying be like the rich people, but when you see a rich person, you say, uh, uh, somebody driving BMW, say, hey, you know what, I would look good in the BMW, one day I'll have it. If you see somebody in a, in a, in a big bungalow, you say, wow, nice house, one day I'll have a house like that. If you see somebody traveling overseas and you say, wow, one day I will be traveling. Admire. Admire. Very important. Huh? And the third one is this. Very important. Huh? All of you have come for my talk today. Do you know 99 people registered for my talk? Only 50 of you turned up for my talk. You know why some of them didn't turn up? You know why some of them didn't sign up for my talk? Ah, free talk, one hour while la, Mr. Kati going to talk. One hour while. Because the rich people will always want to learn. They buy book to read. They attend. To, like you guys, round of applause. Big round of applause. Why? Because you came to learn today. You know what poor people do? They think they know everything. You know, you know. sometimes maybe you have told some of your friends, okay, next week, eh? next week, eh? uh, Tuesday, I'm doing the same talk. This talk that I'm doing now, I'm doing next week, Tuesday, is still available. I think, uh, I don't know how many, I think 20 seats available for, you know, Next week, Adair, you go and tell your friends, lah. Hey, I went to Mr. Kati's talk. Very good, lah. Next Tuesday, ah, lah, come on, lah. Dia dah kaya, boleh cakap. And this is what the rich people think. Because they say, I pun tahu. I also know. But and this is the problem. Your attitude must be, you know, I've got, I've got 10,000 books in my house. My parents are rubber tappers. Huh? One of the things they told me as I'm small is to read book, read book, read book. I read a lot of books. So always learn, read, and grow. Don't be like the poor people who think they know everything. They know everything, man. You go and sit down at a coffee shop and talk. Everything they know, man. But they're poor. Rich people don't show. I still read books. I, wherever I go, I carry a book. I still go. Today also, I went to KLCC. I told my wife and my mother-in-law who went, you know, were there. I said, well, you all walk around. I went to Kinokunia looking for books to read, looking for books to buy. I'm not saying be like me. I'm just saying, welcome to rich people's circle. And this is the three mindset you must have, okay? All right, we have come to the end of the talk. Um, any, uh, okay, good question, eh? Uh, is it too much to ask your book recommendation? Very good. So, uh, Serena, let me tell you what books to read, eh? First book you must read is um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Okay, Rich Dad, Poor Dad is the first book you must read by Robert uh, Kiyosaki, eh? Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Okay, I'll, I'll tell you, you write down, eh? Rich Dad, Poor Dad. You can just Google, it'll come, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Second book I'll ask you to read is The Millionaire Mindset by T. Harvika. The Millionaire Mindset. I repeat, huh? The Millionaire Mindset. T. Harvika, huh? The Millionaire Mindset. Third book I ask you to read is The Science of Getting Rich. The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace D. Waters. The Science of Getting Rich. Okay? Science of Getting Rich. Fourth book I ask you to read is The Richest Man in Babylon. The Richest Man in Babylon. These are the uh, Ruben, you want soft copy? Please put in your evaluation form. You want soft copy? Lenny will tell me. I'll send you the books. Okay, Ruben? I might have soft copy. The signs of getting rich, I have soft copy again. Send it to you. Lah. Okay? Yeah, put it in the evaluation form. You want a soft copy of the book? Then I'll have it sent to you. Yeah? Okay, I have another question. Yeah, if after deducting 11% EPF from salary plus tax, we still have balance is for salary. After the other expenses, uh, can we still take out the remaining balance salary each month and reinvest into EPF? That way, um, that way we further expand our EPF balance and cash reserve. Okay, good question, yeah, Felix. Uh, Felix Vargas, good question. Now, I will tell you this today. Uh, uh, EPF gives you 6%. Insurance gives you 7%. Mutual fund gives you 9%. Okay? But there are also investment opportunities that I, like for example, I make 3%, 5% per month overseas from some of my investment. Okay, so if you are the type who uh, want to invest, um, if EPF is the option you want to go to, yeah, brilliant. You get extra money, put in EPF, and but make sure, about, Felix, uh, enjoy life, make sure you have holidays, make sure you've got time for your family, make sure you do all that. But yeah, extra money, put in EPF. In fact, there are people, even though you're, you, you need to uh, pay 11%, sometimes they pay extra to EPF. Yeah, you can do that, voluntary contribution, you can do that, no problem at all. Okay, Lenny has put in the evaluation form. Click on the evaluation form. Okay, click on the evaluation form. Okay, I'm going to put down my contact number. Okay, so those of you who want, uh, you can also uh, keep in touch with me. Never, never call me. I never take up phone calls. I won't take up because I'm always either training or meeting up people. And I don't take calls from people I don't know. 
So please WhatsApp me. I mean, I'll just say, Mr. Kati, I came for your talk. I have this question, then I'll be able to help you. Huh? That's my contact number, 019-664-399. Like I said, please WhatsApp me. Yeah? Please WhatsApp me, okay? Uh, please click on the evaluation form and then uh, so on. Uh, by the way, I just want to tell you my next online program. Okay, these are the two programs I have next week. So all of you are watching this today. Some of you, if you want to come again, come again next week. Tuesday next week, I'm doing the same talk I did today. Again, the same talk. Uh, I'm also doing a talk on law of attraction next week, uh, Thursday. So Tuesday, Smart Money Workshop. Thursday is this one. Uh, how do you register? You can inform Miss Lenny. Uh, what's up this number? And then inform, take a screenshot of this. Or go to nationaltrainingweek.gov.my and register. Even better, huh? Just go the way you register for this two programs, today's program, just go to National Training. I think we have limited seats, right, Lenny? I think we've got only about 10, 20 seats for each one of it. Because some of you want, might, how much we have? How many seats we have, Lenny? Less than 20. Uh, less than 20 for both, huh? So some of you might want to recommend your brother or sister or your husband or wife to go or your children to go. Quickly get them to register. Is that clear? Okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, in the evaluation form, you'll be asked this question. If we want to be uh, uh, an entrepreneur, I have a program called uh, Five Figure Income in Five Weeks. Uh, sorry, Five Months. Huh? Five Figure Income for five, in Five Months in an online business. So if you're interested, again, you can uh, put there your interest in entrepreneur's coaching program, and then I'll inform you. Huh? So if you have this entrepreneurship burning desire, then put it down. I will inform you when I'm doing the talk. Yeah. Okay, so this is Lenny's number. This is Lenny's number. Take down her number. Take a screenshot. Uh, and this is, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, my YouTube channel. So if you want to go to my YouTube channel, Facebook, nothing much there. Lah. You, you can Lingam, go to my YouTube channel. Lenny, you must remove the Facebook thing lah, in the future. Uh, Lingam, YouTube channel, go to my YouTube channel. You have all the videos there. Um, I teach a lot of things in the YouTube channel. Okay. So now, um, if, if you enjoyed my talk, type 369. 369, 369, 369, 369. Okay. Uh, 369, 369, Now, in case you're wondering why 369, Google. Okay, let's see how many of you will Google and find out what is 369. Eh? Okay, if you love 369, uh, 369 is a magical number. Eh? It's a magic number. Brings you a lot of wealth and prosperity. Okay, 369. So thank you very much, everyone, for participating. I'm so sorry I've taken almost 15 minutes extra of your time. Uh, I really hope to see you, uh, you know, looking forward. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. Thank you, thank you again uh, for being here. Please, please implement. Please implement what you learned today. Uh, I've given you my contact number. If you are having problems stuck, like just now, Felix had a very good question. You can always text me any questions you have, okay? Uh, I will be able to answer. Like I said, don't call me, WhatsApp me, and I'll keep in touch with you. With that, um, if you can, come again next week or inform the people, you, you know, your loved ones come next week. And I hope to maybe see you one day face-to-face, -face, yeah? Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye, take care. Love you guys. Bye. Thanks, Lenny. Bye. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Doctor. I'm ending, yeah. Oh, um, yeah.